Hi, it's Robin. I'm working on a bigger video, but got distracted by this fun little idea. So that's what we're taking a look at now. There'll probably be more Bally Astrocade coming soon. So here's something that I remember being annoyed about as a kid when I was programming in BASIC on my Commodore 64. I'd have a variable, and when I printed it, there would be a space in front of it. I know this is pretty minor in the big scheme of things, but when you try to write a program, so you say you have your score, you know, say you're making a game, and then you print out the score, and there'd be a space there. Well, what if you don't want that space, or you're doing some other fancy formatting? I know I'm not the only one that wishes that we had more control over this. I just saw a Facebook thread recently where some people were talking about this problem. And it happens whenever you try to print out a number, whether it's in a variable, or if you just try to print a literal, you see that space is there in front. But actually, if you try to print a negative number, then there is no leading space. Instead, the negative sign appears there. So it's almost like this is a reserved space. There's like an implied positive sign there, but that would probably be really goofy. So instead, it's either a space for positive or a minus sign for negative numbers. So I don't really know the reasoning behind this. If we write a little program here that just flips a positive and negative, you see that at least it does keep the numbers in a tidy column left justified. So maybe that was the thinking. I don't know if you're printing out results, totals. But I didn't care about that when I was a kid. I was just trying to get my like score routine working without that extra space in front. So I tried to think of ways of working around that. So one approach is when, just writing this example program, if we could move the cursor on top of that nine, and then print a delete and shift the numbers over after they've been printed. That's possibly one solution. So let's try that. We'll enter quote mode after printing the A, and then we will cursor left three times in quote mode. Instead of the cursor moving left, it records these special symbols inside the quotes ready to be printed later. It's like embedded character movement. And then close quote, and I'll print character string 20, which is the delete character. And we'll run that. Now, if you saw it, but the 99 did print over here and then quickly flashed and moved to the left. Try it one more time. Oh, that time I didn't even see it. So that kind of works, but it does require you to know the length of the number ahead of time because you have to print the correct number of characters. So another approach is to print out A and then do a new print statement, which will cause a carriage return, and then print again in quote mode, cursor up, cursor right, and then again the delete character. By the way, you notice I'm not trying to print the delete character because when I cursor up, I cursor right, Commodore did keep the delete key active even in quote mode, because it probably would have been very frustrating for users to not even be able to delete when they make a mistake. I think I read about another 8-bit computer that actually does that. Oh, what was it? Anyway, leave a comment if you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, just we'll print that character string 20, this, that, run that. Okay, and the nice thing here is that now even if we make A like much longer or larger, we'll run it, it still works without any fancy math. This is a bit of a diversion, but here's a trick. We were just talking about how we're printing the delete character because we can't embed that one, but actually you can. If we're here not in quote mode currently, 
you can see I can move the cursor freely. It's not leaving the trail of characters. If I enter reverse mode by holding control nine, reverse on, and then type a T. And that happens to be the control code for delete. You normally don't see it though. And now we'll just go reverse off, close the quotes, and just delete what's there. So this is exactly equivalent, but now we have an embedded delete. Will it work? Yep, still worked. It deleted our leading space. So that's a neat thing. It actually executes quicker as well because it's much quicker for it to print a literal string like this than to interpret the character string keyword. <laughs> but there is a, a side effect. If we list it, <laughs> it actually breaks listing. Now, you might trust that those commands have disappeared, but they haven't. What happens is when the C64 lists this program, it doesn't know to print the embedded delete, it actually literally deletes the characters. So not only does it not print this reverse T, but it also deletes the cursor right character that's here. And you end up with this. But those bytes are still in memory. They just cannot be listed anymore. Uh, we should be able to prove that if I go into the monitor and look at basic RAM. There they still are. You can see them over here on the right. That's up, right, and delete, then the closing quote. So they still are in the basic program. They're still executed, but they do not list. So you can decide if that's worth the trouble. It's still pretty neat, I think. Okay, so we've tried all this messing around with cursors. Is there a bit of a cleaner way of doing that? Well, again, we'll get rid of line 20. Yeah, there are a few other ways of doing it. We can print write string, which will take a string and return a specified number of characters from the right side of the string. But it expects a string input, so we have to use the string function to turn variable a into a string instead of a number. And then this gets a bit ugly. We have to look up the length of the string again to get the number of characters total, and then we want to subtract one so it doesn't print that space at the far left edge. Don't worry, we will improve this. Okay, but it does work. So a nicer way to do that is to just start with a string in the first place, instead of the numeric variable a, We'll just start by converting the number into a string. And then we can do the somewhat tidier printing of just the length minus one. There we go. And if we run that, there we go, 999. And again, it adapts if we put more numbers in there, it deletes that leading space. But we can do even better than that by using the midstring function. Print the midstring of a string starting at character two. And then again, we have to do the math to figure out the length of the string minus one, the right character. Okay, now that does actually look better. We'll run that just to make sure that works, yep. Okay, but what's really neat is that midstring has another variation that I think is really rarely used. You can pass it, instead of three parameters, you can just give it two parameters. Get rid of all that. We'll list that and run it. If you only give midstring two parameters, it'll just print the whole remainder of the string starting at position two. So really, I think this is a very clean solution. And I think it's the best I've ever seen. Okay, so are we done? Well, no, there's still one problem here. If we make a string a negative number, 
it eats the negative sign because it doesn't care whether that's a leading space or minus sign or whatever. The midstring just skips that first character no matter what it is. So we'd have to add more logic to check for negatives and oh, that's all kind of ugly. So if you just know you want to do positive values, then this is a very good solution here. I'd be interested if anybody ha does have a better solution, please leave a comment. Okay, but that got me thinking, maybe we can modify basic. So I think I've shown this before. If we just loop through the basic ROM memory, that's where the basic ROM lives at these addresses in this range, 8K. And if we poke X with peak X, runs over the next line. This is a loop that will just read the ROM and poke it into the RAM underneath. If you ever try to poke into ROM memory on the Commodore 64, it just smartly passes it through to the RAM underneath. And if we do this poke, 48608 comma one, I'll explain that later. And then poke one comma peak one, and 254. Okay, and we'll run it. Now this does take a while to run, so I'll fast forward it. Commodore Basic's pretty slow for peaking and poking. This is uh, over 8,000 numbers. And by the way, make sure you disable your Super Snapshot cartridge when you're running this. For whatever reason, it doesn't play nice with this technique. Okay, so it seems to have not done anything. Well, let's try printing a negative number. Good. Let's try printing a positive number. Oh, <laughs> okay. So this is a little hack here that modifies basic and it has the big advantage of being able to print negative numbers with the negative sign, but for positive numbers, it gets rid of that leading space and it does work for variables as well. There you go. Okay, so how does this work? Well, let's go into the Super Snapshot Monitor. And we're going to disassemble this routine at B, D, D, D. Okay, now this is the modified version. I'm just going to temporarily change location one, set the low bit of it again to look at the basic ROM. So again, disassemble B, D, D, D. And if you look at the second line here, you see it's different. That is the one byte we changed. Okay, so we'll just look at the original one here. And the particular bit we're interested in here is it loading character 20 hex. That is the space character. And then it's testing a bit, and that is where the floating point accumulator has the current number that BASIC is trying to print. And it checks if it's positive, branch of positive, ahead to BDE7, which is just another instruction ahead. But if it's negative, it instead loads the accumulator with 2D, which is the minus sign. So this is the code right here that either converts the number with a leading space if it's positive or a leading minus if it's negative. And that stores it here in a temporary RAM. It's building the string that represents the number. So we don't have to look at all of that just to know that this is the space character. So I looked at a whole bunch of different ways of changing this. I was trying to add some extra logic and branch and, oh, I wondered if I could just skip all this and jump ahead not increment y because I thought that's like an index into the string. So if it's a positive number, skip the increment y. But anyway, that, that messed everything up. I tried two, three, four different approaches and they were just getting more and more complicated. And then I thought, what if I just change the space, character 20, into an unprintable character? So I'm just going to switch back to the RAM under the ROM. Just set that bit down and again, disassemble. So all I did was change it 
here. So instead of character two zero, the space, it loads character one, which is just an unprintable character. So the converted string still has a leading character, but it's one that just doesn't do anything. It just doesn't print at all. And it doesn't print like garbage characters, like some operating systems would. Uh, it seems totally fine. Now I didn't fully unit test basic after this. Uh, if any of you guys really want to do that and I'm wrong, <laughs> if, if I, if I actually bugged basic with this hack, then you let me know and uh, we'll see if we can come up with a better fix. There's actually quite a few unprintable characters in those first, uh, what, 32 or so. Some of them are used, but many are not. Uh, I think it's safe to print a character three as well, which is the, uh, the character for stop. But anyway, that is all the patch does, is it changes this two zero here into a one, so it's unprintable. Seemed like the simplest patch to me. And if you come up with anything better, please share it in the comments, or if indeed this does have some unforeseen bugs I wasn't aware of. So I could have quit there, but I was unhappy with how this takes to execute. And it reminded me of something I've never tried before. I was reading Toolkit Basic, which I've, uh, which I've shown in at least one video before. And it's all about making use of the routines that are built into the Commodore 64 ROMs in, for your own programs. That reminded me on page 123, there's this move memory routine. It's essentially a copy routine that will move a block of memory. The only catch is that the move has to be an upward direction and you can only move downward in memory if there's no overlap of the memory areas. So it's not an all-purpose routine, but it does seem to be pretty good. And you just have to set some pointers for the memory location. So let's try that. So we can poke 95 with 0 and 96 with 160. And that is the start, and this works out to 160 is A0 hex, A000. This is the high byte, A0, and the low is, of course, just 0, 0, 0. So that's A000, which is the start of the basic ROM. And again, we're just dealing with a 0 for all the low bytes here, 91,192. Rem and 192 is C0 and then 00, and that is the end of the basic ROM plus one, and that's what this routine expects. One passed, poke 88, comma zero again, zero low byte, and 89, also 192, dest donation. Might as well add those plus ones on the end here. And you're supposed to tell it the end of the destination, which is unusual. You normally think it'd be the start, but that's how they designed this routine. Probably more convenient to tell it where you want the copy to end. And this is kind of a, a misuse or abuse. We're just telling it to copy onto the same spot. So the, the source and the destination have the same addresses. In case I didn't make it clear, all I'm doing is duplicating that really slow memory loop where I poke all 8,192 bytes of the basic ROM into RAM. We're just trying to speed that up by using this routine. Let's see if it works. Okay, so we've poked the source, end, and destination. And now all we got to do is call it with this sys41919. And then we can just do the same poke as before. That's the actual patch that changes the space into an unprintable character. And then finally, oh, if I didn't make that clear before, this last line switches the basic ROM off and reveals the RAM underneath, which has a nearly identical copy of basic. So the Commodore 64 just continues on as if nothing's changed. So let's try running it. Okay, you can see it only took a couple seconds much better than the, uh, I don't know how long that was. It was nearly a minute to do it in basic. And does it work? Yep.
It works. Excellent. Okay, so I hope you found that, if not actually useful, maybe still educational. Kind of touched on a lot of little aspects of BASIC, and maybe there's a trick or two there. I just found it fun to play around with myself. Hey, thanks to my patrons for their support. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. Let's learn the nibbles. What's a nibble? It's a hexadecimal digit. That means base 16. It's a way of counting from 0 to 15 with a single digit. What's a digit? In the regular decimal system, we can count from 0 to 9, and then we have to add another digit for 10 and beyond. We'll do this with creatures' feet in binary. It'll be fun! Yay! Zero is easy. It has no feet. Nada. But what has one foot? A monopod. One is a monopod. Monopod. What has two feet? A dwarf. Two is a dwarf. Dwarf. Nada. Three is a dwarf and a monopod. Monopod. Okay, we've used up all the feet we have. We need another creature. What has four feet? 